Welcome. I'm Dara Halladier, and we are going through the book Living Beautifully, Practical Proverbs for Women. I'm so glad you joined us this morning. We're going to be studying about guarding our hearts today and how we go about doing that and what all is included. So let's start off with a word of prayer. God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. We know that our hearts are evil above all else, Lord, but that with the renewing of our spirit, Lord, as Christians, that you've given us a new heart. Um, but you had a baby heart, a heart that has to learn and grow. And Father, that we um, give you over more and more of our heart to you, Father, that you, that you can renew it. And I just pray right now, Lord, that you would show us the areas of our hearts that we're still holding on to, Lord, that maybe we haven't made you Lord of, and that you would show us this morning how to guard our hearts. Bless all who are hearing this um, message today, and Lord, that they may be blessed in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guarding your heart. At the beginning of the lesson, this is week five, day one, is Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. What a contrast to the fool that we've been studying who hides himself in the darkness and finds himself unable to sleep unless he's done evil. So the um, righteous shines brighter and brighter. And the next verse that is um, in your lesson is Proverbs 4.23. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And if you're in the King James Version, it'll say guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. So how do we do that? And what all is included in that? We're going to start off with a couple of verses in the book of James. So James is after Hebrews in your Bible, if you want to turn there. We're in James chapter 4. And we see that it says in verse 4, Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Jump down to verse 7. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. In these verses, we see dichotomy, antithesis, opposites. It can't be this and this. It either is this or it's this. We're either all in or we're not in at all. We see the dichotomy of darkness and light, black and white, right and wrong. There is no gray area with our God. We have to be all in or not in at all with him. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Where there's darkness, when light shines, the darkness must flee. Where God is, where the, the Christian is, where the spirit is, when we shine that light of God's word, of God's love into our hearts and into our minds, that darkness must go. It must flee. Um, we have to, to, we can't look towards darkness and towards light at the same time. It's either one or the other. It's that dichotomy. And so we have some choices to make as we're guarding our hearts. And that choice begins, first of all, in making Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, we've talked about him making him our Savior, asking Jesus to come into our heart, to forgive us of our sins, to control our lives, to, to be on the throne of our lives leading us, guiding us, putting him first in all things. Um, and so that's, that's the first step. The second step is this lordship, making him lord of different areas. And this is a, a, a process. It's not something that just happens overnight. Um, we're all in process, and that's okay. We're all going to get there. We're all on our way. None of us are made perfect yet. We'll be perfected in that day when Christ Jesus comes back and returns for us. Um, there was a book a long time ago when I was growing as a new Christian back in the 80s. It was called um, My Heart, Christ's Home, and it was by Robert Boyd Munger. Um, you can find it on Amazon or Google it, um, My Heart, Christ's Home. And he walked through a house, and he showed how each and every room of our heart had to be given over to the Lordship of Christ, every closet, every corner. And that would mean every area from finances to our relationships, to our marriage, to our past, to our future, 
just everything that consists of who we are, our personality and our thoughts have to be turned over and given to, to Jesus to be Lord of those things. And so um, making Jesus Lord of our heart, beginning that process is really what sanctification or Christian growth is all about. And it's also where the spiritual battle takes place. Spiritual battle is the battlefield is in our mind. It says here, how do we how do we go about the spiritual battle? How do we go about making Jesus Lord of our life? Again, Proverbs 4:23, watch over your heart with all diligence. Diligence means consistency, intentionality, it means an effort. It takes an effort to do this. We have to put forth that effort to guard our, our minds and our hearts in Christ Jesus. We have to do it intentionally. We have to be aware of it. We have to slow down enough in our life, in our lifestyle, in our thoughts, in our mind, in order to, to take every thought captive, as it tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.10. These are key verses to living a successful and fruitful life in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to turn there if you've got your Bibles. 2 Corinthians 5.10, and we're going to sit there for just a couple of minutes. I've probably mentioned them before because they are such key verses. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. I'm sorry, it's going to be 1 Corinthians. I keep doing this to y'all, but I really do try. Um, I thought it was 1 Corinthians. Let's try this again. First, 2 Corinthians 10. That's what I did wrong. It's 2 Corinthians, but it's 10, verse 5. I'm, I'm dyslexic. I get those things switched around. So when we are weak, God is strong. So hang in there with me. Um, so 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to start with verse um, 3 and read through verse 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. How do we guard our hearts? First of all, we have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We have to thrust out speculations. Those speculations are the, oh, if I'd only done this, maybe I should have done that. If I had done this and this would have been different. We need to look at our past and say, I did the best that I could at the moment. or I sinned, I give that to you, Lord, I lay it at the cross and move forward. We can't allow our past to put us in a cage to enslave us. We need to let it go, realize that we made, made mistakes, we've repented before the Lord, we did the best we could with what we knew at the time, and we can't go back and redo it. We need to turn our back and press on for the upper call of God in Christ Jesus, as it tells us in Philippians. We need to thrust out the speculations because that's one way that Satan can just grab us and, and, and all of a sudden we're spiraling, spiraling down in our mood and our depression very quickly. The second thing that Satan uses is the lies. It says um, we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. If it's not the knowledge of God, then it's of Satan and it is a lie. And boy, those things in our mind can grab us again and again. It can be lies from the world. It can be lies that Satan puts within our minds. It can be lies from our past, those old recordings. So maybe somebody said something to you at one time. Um, as, a, as a new believer in the church, I love to sing. And my husband told me one time, he says, you have a great choir voice. You shouldn't try and sing solos. <laughs> and so for 50 or 30 some years, I haven't sung solos. Um, that, was, that was a lie that I chose to hold on to and didn't allow myself to grow. In that area, it might be lies. Um, my my mother told me one time that uh, I, it's a good thing I had boys. I'd have been a terrible mother to girls. And so when these daughter laws came along and granddaughters, I'm, I'm still holding on to this lie that I had believed that when she had said these things. Um, if you're fat and ugly, you have no value. Um, so the, all these lies that we believe, and there's some books out there that are really helpful. They're called The Lies That We Believe or The Lies Women Believe. Check those out. Um, but we do have those lies that begin to play in our minds. And the way we take those, thought, those thoughts captive is to go, first of all, we have to recognize it as a lie. And it's a lie because it does not line up with God's word. And then we have to replace it with the truth. So what lies have you 
believed. And the third thing that we see here is pride. It's every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of Christ. Um, pride, lofty things, thinking more of ourselves than we should, realizing um, as a Christian, we really have no rights. We've yielded our rights to Jesus Christ, to God. And if we've yielded up our rights, when things happen, it's, it's not about us. It's not about I'm better than they are or how dare they treat me this way. We have no rights to begin with. And so we um, need to humble ourselves before the Lord and ask him, how do we handle the situation? And, and it's when we begin allowing that pride to come in that we will begin to uh, make bad decisions um, and, and affect relationships in bad ways and things like that. So we need to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. In order to do this, it requires accountability. Have an accountability partner. Have somebody else that you're doing with this with. Call them up on the phone once a day or once a week and say, how'd you do this week? I'm taking every thought captive. It's slowing down your thoughts long enough to stop and think, okay, where did that thought come from? Was that truth or was it a lie? Is it what the world's telling me? Is it something from my past? Um, as we do, take our thoughts and put it up to the light of God's word, we will see truth. So we have to slow down our thoughts. We have to practice. It takes practice to take every thought captive. And then there's some, some um, questions in your book on page 74 that you can ask. Is this thought pleasing to God? Is this thought pleasing to God? Is this, is this a thought I would bring before him at his throne and, and claim his truth? Um, does this thought line up with scripture? Um, when I look in the mirror and I say, boy, I've gained some weight. I'm so fat and ugly. The truth is I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a worth, worth a, a woman of worth because I am God's child. Um, and so I can take those um, lies and thrust them out. Um, where is this thought originating from? And if it's not true, what is the truth? Um, let's look at Proverbs over in chapter three, kind of hanging out in chapter Proverbs three and four right now. Proverbs chapter three, and I want to look at verse um, 24. I bet I'm supposed to be looking at Proverbs 4, 24. That's where it is. Proverbs 4, 24. Boy, I, I tell you, I'm just writing these numbers down all, all over the place today. Proverbs 4, verse 24. This is, comes right after, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious speech far from you. So out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So again, that dichotomy. Um, if it's devious, if it's um, deceitful, Put it away from you and fill up your heart, fill up your mind with good and right and truth. Then from out of the heart, your mouth will speak. So as we learn not to speak in these ways, our hearts and minds will also begin to change. Um, the next verse says, let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watching over our heart, guarding our heart, requires not only watching our speech, but looking forward. Put, fix your eyes on Jesus and, and look only to him. Look up. Um, we've read some verses before in Colossians and other places where it says to, to only look to him, that straight path. Don't look to the right or to the left. And so we look ahead at Jesus. We put our attention on those things which are good and right and lovely and of pure or of excellence. We surround ourselves with godly friends that are in the word and desiring to grow, that we can pray with together and that will have an internal perspective with us. Um, so eyes looking straight at Jesus on that straight path. Being careful of distractions. There's a lot of good things we can do. There's a lot of good, pleasant things in this world. There's a lot of things that are pleasing to our senses that are not sinful. Um, standing out in the breeze and watching the beauty of the, the butterflies and the flowers and the sunrise and the sunset, sitting and enjoying a nice meal with my husband. Those things all are um, pleasing to my senses. And that's not, those are not sinful. So putting our mind on that which is good and right and not turning. Being single 
focused, being with our eyes, looking only to that which God has called us to do and not getting, we, we call them squirrels at our house where, because I have a golden retriever, his name is Jack. And Jack, oh man, he'll know right what he's supposed to do and he's going for it and all of a sudden there'll be a squirrel and off he goes that way. <laughs> we'll call him back and he'll get going and all of a sudden there's a squirrel over here and so off he goes to chase that squirrel. So we call them squirrels at our house. Um, when we're traveling, my husband says, you only have two, allowed two squirrels today. And that means he wants to get somewhere and he wants to get there fast. So he'll only allow me twice to be able to say, oh, look, it says there that there's an aquarium or it looks there that, that let's go climb that mountain or all of the distractions that we can get into our lives. And so we've got to stay single focused and not allow those distractions to pull us from the path of righteousness, that which we're looking for the cross of Jesus Christ and the future of heaven with him. We need to stay single focused. And we've looked at this verse before in Philippians. I'll turn there real quick. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Not that I've already obtained it or have already been become perfect, but I press on, hopefully on the right trail, so that I may lay hold of that for which I also was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. So we need to know what the path is, and then we need to walk that path. The goal of the prize of Christ Jesus, the things that he has promised us, our, our, our inheritance, um, the joy, peace, love, kindness, those things that he will give us as we walk with him. We've got to keep our minds set and stay single focused on those and recognize the distractions and whether it's a healthy distraction or if there's just too many distractions, even if they're good things, we need to pull back sometimes. When our kids were younger, we put a poster board on the wall and we wrote down everything we were doing. There was no, nothing bad on there, um, but it was just too much. It was too much for a family with five young boys trying to homeschool and be involved in church and my husband's church work and, and everything. It was too much. So we acknowledged before the boys, these are all good things. But what is God calling us to do? What is best for us individually? What is best for us as a family? And we began to choose those couple of things that we wanted to put our efforts for and be single focused. And, and I can't ever talk about being single focused without mentioning my son, Lucas, my Lucas, who's studying to be a missionary pilot. He has dyslexia. He has some other learning disabilities. Studying is hard for him. This is a six to eight year degree. And he has stayed the path, knowing that this is what God has called him to do. And he does not get distracted by everything else going on. Um, he goes to work. He works at Chick-fil-A. He's the head of the kitchen so that he can have money in order to go to school to become a missionary pilot. At one time, he was distracted. They wanted to offer him a managership, and they wanted to offer him all these other things, which would have been wonderful, but it would have taken his time and effort and, and thought away from his single goal of doing what God has called him to do. And so we're very proud of him and that single focusedness. Um, and then the last thing is how we spend our time. Let's look again in Proverbs. Got to get there. Chapter four, um, the path of our feet. So 24, chapter four, verse 24, put away from you a deceitful mouth and devious speech from you. So guarding your heart so that out of your heart, your mouth speaks. Yet let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. And then verse 26 says, Watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Where are your feet taking you? What are you spending your time doing? Where are you going? If you will guard those things, then your peace will be established. It said that um, your ways will be established. Where are you spending your time? If you're spending your time and hours and hours and hours in front of the um, computer playing games, um, pornography, which of course is wrong. Um, if you're hanging out at the bars or at the, the park with the guys back behind smoking and, and you're, you're great on Sunday mornings, but you're doing these things during the week, that's a problem. And so giving every area of our heart to Jesus Christ. Um, for us women, it may not be technology so much, although it is a good idea to put down your phone. Um, it's a good idea to take the games off of your phone. 
it's a good idea to use your phone as a phone and occasionally to look something up maybe, but not allowing it to be such a distraction for us. But also the reading of romance novels. I'm a Christian, there's a whole slew of Christian romance novels, and I can read those and see all of the um, perfect men out there and the perfect ways that they got together and all, and I can become dissatisfied with my own life, with my own husband. Um, so even being aware of what we're reading, what we're putting in front of us, the television shows, if Jesus were sitting on the couch next to you, would you watch that television show? <laughs> that one will get you. If Jesus were walking with you, would you go to those places? If Jesus was with you, would you be friends with this person? And that's a good way to ask um, and, and to, to guard your heart and to watch, put a, a, a guard or a, a boundary around your heart and your mind, watching the path of your feet as well. And then it says, watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left, turn your foot from evil and again we see that dichotomy it's either evil or it's good and we have to choose what are those things that god is calling us individually and us as a church as a group of born again believers to put our focus on and are we taking every thought captive to the obedience of christ and giving him lordship of the different areas of our lives um, if there's abuse in your past, have you turned that over to God? Have you forgiven um, the abusers in your past? Um, if any of these things, you know, you're, you're still wanting to hold on to, if it's those finances, so you're, maybe you're not tithing because there's just not enough to go around. Let me challenge you. If you will put God first, if you will tithe the very first money out of that paycheck, God will make sure that all of your needs are met. I don't know how many years we struggled with um, three and then five children in seminary, working two and three jobs. Um, I was chose to stay home with our children, so we've been on a single income um, all of our married life, except for a few piano lessons here and there. And God has met every need. We have chosen to tithe in slim times and in fat times. And we have tithe started out with just that 10% because we were legalistic at the beginning and that's what we thought we could do. And as time has grown, we've been able to give more and more and more. We see people like the Mayo brothers who gave over 50% of their income. We see JC Penney's gave over 50% of his income. Um, Rich Turno gave over 50%. And so even in those areas that if we're holding on to them and saying, no, this one's mine. God, you can have every other part of my life, but I'm going to control this one. That's the area that God wants to work with you on, um, whether it be your mouth or where you tend to go or the things that you're, you're watching and doing. So making Jesus Lord of our life, because when we're looking at him, we're not walking in the evil way. We can't be doing both. And remember where darkness and where light is, darkness must flee. And if you're uh, if you you're either all in or you're not in at all. I was in James um, earlier, and I looked across the page, and I want to just share one more verse with you. It just kind of stuck out with to me. And um, over in James, and we're in chapter two, verse ten. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. So by holding on to that one thing, I know we're not under law anymore, and praise God for his grace, praise God for his forgiveness, praise God that he's teaching us and training us and, and, and loving us, and he, he, he even delights in you. Did you know that? The Bible tells us God delights in us. That's wonderful, but if we're holding on to just that one sin, that one pet sin or that one pet area of our lives, then we're stumbling in all of it. We need to turn to the light and let that light shine into every corner and every closet of our heart. May you be blessed today through Christ Jesus and guard your heart that you, he may establish your way to heaven in Jesus' name.